So I have got to dive in there just a brief moment sure. before we even go further because yeah, yeah. liquidating an entire portfolio in 2007 is something that mm -hmm. I think looking at the chart, you can say, well, that's easy to do. Well, that's because you can see the rest of the chart. What you can't see is that everyone and their uncle and their nanny are making money hand over fist right around that time. So tell me how you anticipated that. You mentioned dumb luck. I'm interested to hear because I want some of that. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, so now that's an interesting question, but I do beg to differ on one assertion that you've made, actually, Hunter, and that is that actually it wasn't everybody and their grandmother that were making money at that time. And, and the needle has dramatically shifted since then. This is something I know that we're going to be talking about with crowdfunding, that actually next time around, it is possible for everyone to make money in a down cycle. Actually, what happened last time was that there was a bifurcation in the market. So when the market collapsed, and by the way, just to put this into context, I actually ended up working on portfolios, I'm guessing north of $10 billion during the downturn, both for the bank and then also at uh, Colony Capital, who I went to work for okay. on their okay. portfolios. And they had about $6 billion. So between the bank and, the, and Colony, probably around $10 billion that I worked on. So I saw absolutely every possible way a deal can go wrong. Basically, it was, uh, I have a real PhD, but then it was like getting a PhD in how not to do real estate, basically. So here's how the market, here's how the market functioned. There were two uh, constituencies, if you like. There were developers and then there were investors. Now, developers, seasoned real estate people who had access to guys like me, right, who were inside banks and had access to distressed deals, problem that they had was that their capital sources had all dried up. The institutional capital had dried up. Lending had basically completely stopped. So there were more deals that they wanted to do then there was cash really in the system. And that's why prices collapsed in the way that they did. But even then, developers and people with access were unable to acquire everything that they wanted to, right? They really had to carefully pick and choose. On the other hand, there were high net worth individuals, millions of them across the United States who all wanted a piece of that action right? That's everybody and their grandmother really did want a piece of those deals, right? They understood that real estate was, pricing for real estate was historically depressed, but they didn't have the access. And even if they did, they didn't have the experience or the depth of capital to be able to benefit completely, right? To be able to buy into some of these really juicy deals. And these two audiences or these two populations, right, developers with access and uh, investors were prohibited by law from communicating, or at least developers were prohibited from advertising saying, I've got this amazing deal flow, invest with me. It was, as you know, illegal, <laughs> basically. Right. Then comes around the Jobs Act of 2012 that changed that dramatically. And now developers can advertise. They can put on their website, advertise on Facebook and say, hey, we have deals. So the needle has moved dramatically. And next time, developers who are well positioned, who position themselves today, will have this new pipeline opportunity for capital from high net worth individuals that they did not have access to last time. 